So what I want to do now is I want to think about the function uh, that's going to map the complex plane to the complex plane given by, actually it maps the complex plane to the complex plane minus the origin. I want to change the codomain so that this function is onto so that we can talk about inverses. And uh, the function that I'm thinking of is f of z is e to the z. Okay, so, or, or sometimes the book likes to write it, z gets mapped to e to the z. Okay, this is a really common way to write it in, in mathematical lingo. But the function we're looking at is f of z is e to the z. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, stick with the branch. Um, let's say that when we think about the complex plane, we're gonna think about values where uh, the branch we're gonna use is from negative pi to pi. So this is gonna be a half open, half closed interval. We're gonna include pi, but not include negative pi. So in other words, um, we're not gonna quite get here when we start. And then when we go all the way around, then we'll include that point. So we're gonna go from negative pi to pi. And that's gonna be the, the principal branch that we're gonna use for this function. And so if you were to compute e to the z, um, we know how to do that, right? If we have z is x plus i, y, we know that e to the z is going to be e to the x times e to the i, y, which is cosine of y plus i sine of y. Okay, and so that's what this function is going to do. That's how this, uh, that's how this works. So that's really all I wanted to say about the function e to the z, uh, except now let's talk about its inverse. So now let's consider f, which is going to map the non-zero complex plane to the complex plane, where the function is going to be log z, so it's log with a capital L. And you can actually do this for, um, if you have a branch specified ahead of time, different branches, as long as the branch has uh, length 2 pi, um, and you include exactly one of the endpoints. If you have different branches, that'll give you just a different log function. But what we're going to do now is we're going to work with what's called the principal branch. Um, so this is going to be called the principal branch of the logarithm. And that means that we're going to stick with, um, uh, so capital log z, we're going to stick with this branch of negative pi to pi including pi, not including negative pi. And when we do this, uh, what happens is our log function, capital uh, L log function, is going to be defined as the natural log of the absolute value of z, by absolute value, I mean the modulus, plus i times the argument of z, where the argument of z is the angle between negative pi and pi. So the argument of z is going to be between negative pi and pi, including pi, not including negative pi. And it turns out that as long as you specify a particular branch, then you get the usual, um, you get the usual consequences that uh, log and uh, e to the z are inverse functions in the sense that if you were to have uh, log of e to the z or e to the log z, this is going to be z. And again, this only works when you stick to a particular branch, right? You have to be really careful about that. But they are inverse functions in that sense. And then you can also talk about things like uh, if A and B are complex numbers, uh, let's say A is non-zero, so that this actually makes sense, then A to the B you can define as, uh, well, you can define that as uh, E to the log of A to the B which is going to be e to the b log of a. So the usual logarithm properties hold uh, when you stick with one specific branch. So you can bring that b down from the exponent. And so, for example, if you were to look at i to the i, this is going to be e to the log of i to the i. Or you can just, if you want, you can just think of this as kind of the definition of a to the b. It's e to the b log a. And so this is going to be e to the i log of i. And now let's think about how this is going to work. So we're going to go, 
we're going to think about our complex plane. I is this point up here. And we have kind of, I want you to picture kind of a break here on the negative, um, the negative part of the real axis. And so uh, again, if you, were to, uh, if you were to approach this from the top side, then you would include that bar. If you approach it from the bottom side, then you would not, that bar is missing. Um, and so uh, this is gonna be e to the i log i. Well, capital L log, this is the principal value of the logarithm is gonna be defined as the natural log of the modulus of i plus i times the argument of i, okay? Because in general, just remember that, uh, uh, just remember, I don't know where to put this in, but log of z is the natural log of the modulus of z plus i times the argument of z. That's how that's defined, okay? So just remembering that from earlier. So, uh, and actually let's make that um, a funny color so that that stands out a little bit. All right, so if we think about uh, log of i, that's gonna be the natural log of the modulus of i. Now i has modulus one, it's distance one from the origin. So we're gonna get the natural log of one plus i times the argument of i. And if we think about the argument of i, what we're thinking about is what's the angle that we're gonna uh, think about when we put this in polar. So what's the angle? Well, it's pi over two, okay? And so the natural log of one is zero. And so it turns out that log of i, the principal branch of the logarithm, is gonna be i times pi over two. And therefore, i to the i, which is e to the i times uh, the principal, uh, the logarithm. I'm just gonna start to say logarithm, even though I, when you say logarithm, it's a multi-valued function. So what you have to do is you have to specify a branch in order for it to be a single valued function. Uh, so whenever I say logarithm, if I don't say otherwise, I'll always mean the principal value, um, the principal branch of the logarithm. So this is gonna be uh, e to the i times, so log of i was uh, i times pi over two. And this is e to the negative pi over two, which is about 0 0.208. Okay, so this actually turns out i to the i, surprisingly, it turns out to be a real number that's uh, a little bit more than a fifth. Okay, but that's how we're going to deal with uh, logs and exponentials. And then all of the usual exponential and logarithm uh, facts work. Okay, so again, this is a little bit of a repeat, but uh, we know that uh, if we were to have e to the z times e to the w, this is e to the z plus w uh, and all those other facts uh, that we could have with it. Uh, if we were to have um, uh, e to the z to the w, this would be e to the z times w. Uh, if we were to have, um, let's see what else. If we were to have the log of um, a times b, this is gonna be the log of a plus the log of b, except we have to be a little bit careful here in that, uh, this is not gonna be exactly true. This is uh, up to uh, multiples of two pi i. Because this logarithm is gonna have an argument from negative pi to pi. This one's gonna have an argument from negative pi to pi. And then if we add them together, then those arguments might be from negative two pi to two pi. So uh, we might be off by a factor of two pi. Um, and therefore, since it's i arg, uh, arg z, uh, we might be off by a multiple of two pi i, but otherwise uh, everything will be fine, okay? And so all the usual uh, log rules work there. Uh, we know that the derivative of e to the z, this is really wanted, what I wanted to talk about, the derivative of e to the z is e to the z. We know that the derivative, I'm not sure if actually I've said this before, but it turns out that the derivative of the log of z is gonna be one over z. And the reason why you can see that is that you can use the inverse function theorem, right? You know that z, so if we want to call this a proof for a sketch. Uh, we know that z is e to the log of z. Um, and so that means that if you differentiate both sides with respect to z, you're going to get one. Uh, on the right side, you're going to get e to the log of 
z times the derivative of the exponent, which is the thing that we're looking for. And that means that this derivative of the log is gonna be one over e to the log z, but e to the log z is just z. So that's why that derivative is gonna be one over z. That's basically the inverse function theorem at work. Okay, and so I think that's everything I wanted to say for now about the logarithm. We're gonna work with this, um, uh, the principal branch of the logarithm. So going from negative pi to pi, including pi, not including negative pi. And then once we do that, uh, having this definition of the uh, of that principal branch of the logarithm will be very helpful, okay? And then we can think of this function as being um, an inverse of e to the z uh, with the specific branch, okay? And so we'll talk about, this is basically all I wanted to say about derivatives of everything. Um, and so uh, in the next video or two, we'll talk about some, some antiderivatives and integrals, and we'll get into that portion of the course.